And now we are going to transition to the uh, new part of the event, which is coverage of some reliability uh, focused uh, topics. So, and, and to kick things off, we're going to start with the Fuong, who's going to talk about solving reliability challenges with black box. Hi, everyone. My name is Fang, and I'm from the Facebook Call Help team. And in this talk, we will be talking about how we use black box to solve reliability challenges. So first thing, what is black box? Black box is our mobile locking framework. It is available on Android and iOS. It is based on our open source profiler uh, library, uh, and it is a circular buffer in memory. Uh, it captures data from app start into error site. And an error site could be a crash, a user bug report, or a just a known fatal error site. And the data is uploaded on only when an error has been encountered. So why black box? We want to be efficient with the way we capture these error logging. Um, since black box is entirely in memory, it has minimal uh, runtime overhead and it doesn't affect overall app performance. We want to minimize the amount of this I.O because continuously writing stream of data to disk would be detrimental to flash drive. And we only want to send up data when an error has been encountered to minimize network usage. What can we record in a black box? So there are various different kind of uh, data provider that can feed data into black box. Uh, everything from uh, instrumented events, stack trace, to network traffic, uh, file I.O., Android lifecycle, and code execution. Um, and we use different combinations of data source depending on the scenario that we want to go after. So in today's talk, um, I will go into two major areas um, for our use case, uh, functional and crash reliability. So first up is functional. What is functional reliability? It is making sure that our app just works. Uh, an example of functional issue is when you click on a button and it doesn't perform the expected action or uh, your feed is just not loading. So that, and when those things happen, it causes a user a lot of pain and a lot of time the end up, user end up filing a report. Um, so every day, Facebook receives hundreds of thousands of bug reports from our user. And so we want to make the best use of these reports to understand um, our user pain. Um, we want to make these bug reports actionable we want to understand the cause of the user pain, whether that could be an environmental issue. I mean, uh, the user could be having a bad network connection. Is it a future confusion where the user uh, simply don't understand how to carry out an action? Or we just have a bug and it, the app doesn't do what it's supposed to. Uh, we also want to understand the context of the bug report, what the user was doing leading up to the error site, uh, what the product was doing, or was there any specific error? So next, we're going to look at a few examples on how we use black box to debug a bug report. Uh, the first example is the, the user report that uh, they can't delete a story that they have created. Uh, so lo looking at the log, we can, we can verify that the user did click on the bug report. Uh, we sent a request to the server. The request is successful. And we show the confirmation to the user. Everything sounds good, but 20 seconds later, the user again click the delete button for the same story, the same thread. Again, we send a request. The server say everything is good, and again we show the confirmation. So this is showing us that the user is still um, not happy with the result of the action, even though everything supposedly successful. Uh, Looking at further in the log, we can see that locally, the data layer have deleted the story upon confirmation, but the UI layer is still allowing the same story to be loaded from cache. It's still rendering the same story. So therefore, the user is still trying to delete the same story. Um, so this allows us to, um, to narrow down on the cause of the problem, and in this case, it is a disconnect between the UI layer and data layer uh, and focus our debugging effort from there. So 
this kind, these kinds of analysis are time consuming and is require a very, spe very specific product knowledge. Uh, and we need a way to scale this into the large volume of book report that we're getting every day. So we built a system called trade checking. So this is a framework for us to uh, pull signal insight from book report automatically that can explain the user pain. Uh, and it pull out the things that developer would have looked for themselves if they were looking at this book. So for example, for the bugs that I showed earlier, we can pull out the fact that the user did tap the delete button. So we know for sure this is not a uh, future confusion. Uh, and we have have received a successful uh, response from the server. So this is not a backend issue. Uh, so from there, it's allow us to quickly narrow down the problem without having to go through the whole log. Another example is uh, when the user report that there is no sound. Um, they are trying to play a video and they're not getting audio output. And so going through the log, we can extract out the fact that the device had muted the volume. So that means the user set the device volume to zero. So there is nothing that we can do in this case to, uh, to carve audio, but we can do a better job of informing the user that, hey, your audio is turned all the way down. You should bring it back up um, to get audio output. Uh, so from those, uh, from the trade tagging that we, uh, we can start gaining a better perspective on what causing the most user pain. So from this example, we're looking at a specific group of symptoms, which is no audio. So when users are complaining that they are not getting audio, 32% of the time, we, uh, we derive that it is due to uh, mute encoding. So what it means is that the audio stream itself was muted intentionally. And this is likely due to copyright issue. Uh, and this lead to user confusion. A user could be trying to adjust their volume and that would not do anything because the, audio, the, the video itself does not have audio. Uh, so we could do a better job here uh, of improving the user experience. Next up, we're going to talk about how we use black box for crash reliability. So we want to deliver a reliable, consistent experience to our user. And crashing is not a pleasant experience. Um, every day, we get lots and lots of crash report from our user. And a lot of the crash are straightforward. We look at a stack trace and we understand what's going on. Uh, but the case is what we want to go after here, where a crash is where stack trace isn't helpful or there isn't one at all. Uh, example of the difficult cases are, let's say, uh, out of memory. When you're running out of memory, most of the time the crash site is the straw to break the camel's back. It's not necessarily the cost. Uh, or uh, in, a, in another scenario we call unknown foreground app debt, which is where the app process simply die. Um, or we have native system crash, where the crash site is somewhere inside of the system framework, independent of our code. So it could have been something that we did that caused a crash, but it is uh, remote, removed from the context. Um, so for these crashes, we want to know uh, the immediate context of the crash. What, uh, what was the system doing at the time of the crash? Uh, you know, was there, uh, we can get sys trace, we can look for lock contention, we can look at the context leading up to the crash, what the user was doing, what the product was doing leading up to the crash. Uh, so let's go through some example. So in this example, we looking at um, two different thread that doing at this crash site was doing very similar thing. Uh, they both trying to create layout and one is coming from the main thread and the other coming from an async context. Uh, and they're both running in the same section of code, uh, potentially affecting the same outcome. And this create a scenario, um, an undesired scenario where it can lead to a crash. Uh, this is an example of an Android out of memory. Uh, so in this case, we, have, um, we are using memory tracing to uh, understand the ooms. We look at three minutes of data before the crash site we can see that when the app transition from this activity into this one, which is uh, the model in the wood activity, which is the uh, image collage, an editable image collage, uh, that is allocate about 100 megs of memory, which push it right up to the limit of what the heap can support. 
so by the time it load up this activity, which is the camera activity, there are just aren't a whole lot left to work with. Uh, and it shortly oom um after. But if you look at this, this is not the fault of the camera activity, but the one before it that you know, allocate a lot of memory. Um, in, in some other scenario of ooms, uh, we need more contextual information. So in this case, we know that it was ooming while trying to decode an asset, but uh, which asset it is uh, could be difficult to track down because we have hundreds of different assets that it could be working on. So in this case, we use a specific event instrumentation uh, right before the call site uh, going into the decoder. So we know this is the asset that being, it's being worked on that caused a large memory allocation that led to the OOM. Um, application not responding is also a class of difficult um, crashes to diagnose. Uh, with black box, we're hoping to gain a better understanding of what lead to an ANR. So in this example, we can see that the system is running into a critical condition. It's repeatedly trying to send out trim event uh, and right up before, a minute before the ANR, it, it tried to do a lot of different, a lot of uh, garbage collection, repeatedly trying to do garbage collection, trying to regain memory uh, and to no avail. And it's still in a system, in a critical state. And eventually it ANR at this point. So this in aggregate help us inform us of um, the type of ANR we are encountering uh, and the context in which they are happening. And uh, that concludes our talk on Black Box. If you have any further questions, I can answer them in the Slack channel. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bong. It was a super interesting talk. And I can easily see how this can be potentially extended to include uh, performance metrics, because I think it's a common issue when people get a performance report, they don't always have enough context or information to go about fixing a performance issue. So having similar techniques that enrich context when filing reports is probably going to be extremely useful. Looks like you've already answered uh, all the questions that were in Q&A. So uh, we will be able to transition to another talk to make sure that we are on schedule. Thank you so much again. For